Hi, Josh Carr here, uh, working on another case. Uh, today we're going to talk about balsa construction. Always an interesting case. Uh, this is from my book, which is on my website, Cars Challenge Cases. And as always, I like to remind you, if you have a case and you'd like me to solve it, uh, email it to me. You know, the more the merrier, right? Just send it over. I'll take a look at it and see what I can do with it. In any event, uh, let's work through it um, and just dive right in. Probably will take a couple videos, but let's see what we can do. So first off, uh, basic information, balsa construction, building strong. That's my goofball sense of humor. Uh, its square footage is 200,000, 40,000 feet. Price is 135 per foot. In other words, 240 times 135 formatting. That was just control shift one. That's not that hard. Um, currently there's a tenant for 50% of the building at 25 bucks a foot for 10 years with rent bumps. And there's also operating expenses. Okay, so let's start building this out. <coughs> it also says there are going to be two other tenants. Um, it says down here, we're going to lease the balance of the space for two equal tenants. So I think the first thing to do here, just to make this work, is we're going to have tenant one, tenant two, tenant three. That's going to be our gross income. Uh, there's no mention here of a vacancy factor. So I'm going to just say that that is our you know, potential gross revenue. You know, if I were actually doing this in a class, that would be the kind of thing, or, you know, exam, that's the kind of thing I'd probably bring up is someone taking it to say, hey, this is great, there's rental income calculations, but, you know, what about vacancy? What about credit loss? What about the credit quality of these tenants? I mean, we haven't been given any of that information. Um, cool. And then as for operating expenses, we're going to have some operating expenses. And... We're going to have, you know, years one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a five-year hold, so we're going to need five years of cash flow. You can see it says we're selling at the end of five years. Uh, so we need year six's NOI. It's net operating income to drive the sale price. Net operating income. What else are we going to have in there? Uh, it looks like we're going to have uh, debt service, TIs, commissions, the rest of it. Okay, so... I'm going to come back to that. Um, I will make a line for tenant improvements and leasing commissions because we're going to need that. Now, before I go any further, you'll notice that I did it as years one through six. But if you read a little bit further, it does make the point of, hey, there's a mortgage that's amortizing. It doesn't say that you need to do it over 300 months. But it does up here say that one of the leases is going to happen at month eight and one is going to happen at month 15. So unless you want to do something really convoluted with like partial year incomes, I think we'd be better off not doing years one through six, but rather months one through 72, right? So let me just drag that bad boy across and bring it out there to... 72. Cool. And I'll come back to this in a moment. This was an example of something I was going to use to show you <clears throat> how to solve at least part of this problem. But I'll come back to that later. Okay, so tenant one is not that hard. It says they're half the building, they're 25 bucks a foot, 10 years. 5% bumps, and then the other people are, um, it looks like flat rate for five years each at 27 bucks a foot. Okay, um, let's do the other people first, tenant two and tenant three. I mean, there are all kinds of fancy ways to build this, but I think the easiest way to do it would just be to say it's 27 bucks a foot times, <clears throat> pardon me, times in this case, if it's 120,000 feet, it's 60,000 feet each. You know, I'm just going to up here for kick, say, put in some square footages. I'm just going to put in that tenant one is 120,000 feet because they're half the building. And this is going to be 
that divided by two, and that's going to be that. Here we go. That's my square footages. Obviously, I could have typed that in, but anything you can, anytime you can make something flexible, uh, it's a good thing because then you know you can vary it over time. Uh, ten and two and ten and three don't have bumps, so they're going to be quicker to build. Uh, and op x is easy. L let's do op x actually, because that's probably the easiest thing to build. This is thirteen bucks a foot, and according to this, there's no rent growth. Obviously, no rent growth, no expense growth. Not that realistic, but. You know, let's address this. And again, that's the kind of thing that if I were doing this in the real world, I would address. So if I do op x 13, it's going to be 240 times 13 per year divided by 12. It's going to be 260 a month. And this I can just drag all the way across, right? That I can just fill to like month 72. Awesome. That one's obviously pretty easy. <coughs> Pardon me for the cough. I'm sorry. I don't have like an audio editing team, so you have to kind of deal with, you know, what you get. PGR is again going out to 72. NOI is going to be PGR minus OPEX. You know, sometimes what people do to make this, there are a lot of ways to do this, but let me just drag it out. Well, it doesn't take that long to do. Pull out some basic machinery. Okay, so let's get to this. Uh, tenant one is 240 foot times 25 bucks. The other guys are just 27. So I'm going to put in 27, 27 square foot, dollar per square foot. And then over here, I'm going to say that this guy starts in month two. So month two is going to be 60,000 times 27 bucks a foot divided by 12. Okay. And I'm going to drag that across a little. And then as we discover over here, this guy is going to be the same thing, right? It's again going to be 60,000 times. 27 divided by 12. I'm going to take that. I'm going to bring that across. Do, 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 do. Awesome. Oh, wait. Sorry. Right. So that's each of those are putting in 135. The interesting one, of course, is not the 135. The interesting one is what do we do about this first tenant? It says it's got 5% rent bumps. Um, we're going to have to put in how the bumps work. So there are a lot of ways to do this, but I think the best way to do this is this. We build a little schedule. We say, look, from months 1 to 24, and from that, to 48, So there's my 10 years in, in bumps. It's going to start at um, 25 bucks. <clears throat> and then it's going to go up over time. In this case, there's going to be 3% growth. So it's going to be that times 1 plus the rate of growth. Right? There's our, our rents. That's our growth rates. Okay, now to populate this, we're gonna have to do some sort of lookup function or a sum if function to say, depending on what value is here as the month, I wanna pull a different value from there. So here's a simple example. Over here, I did a sum if calculation that said, based on the date, Based on the date it sees here, what do I pull? So for example, if I do a sum ifs, what sum ifs does is it says, let's say this is six, five, four, three. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna just do it over here. I'm just gonna do it, not even with that example. I'm gonna do it over here. 
So let's test this. I want to have something that depending whether or not I put in five or put in 50, it spits out what the rent is, right? So I'm going to have the, I'm going to have the, you know, month question mark, and I'm going to have the answer here, right? So I, depending on what I put in here, I'm going to get an answer here. So I'm going to put in like the number six. Or better yet, let's put in a number in the middle, like 50. What a sum ifs does is it says, look, I know the answers are going to be here. I'm going to look at the first criteria, which is the start of the thing. And I want a cri I want to have it between X and Y, right? I want to have month 50 be the value between 49 and 72 and spit out what's in column L. In other words, look at the red zone and tell me where the red zone is less than L8, and at the same time tell me where these values are greater than, oops, greater than L8. <clears throat> and if I do that, it'll look for the blue value, which is uh, basically finding where the purple is between the red and the green. That's what that does. And you really have to watch the syntax. You need the quotes around the less than or greater than sign. You need the ampersand to connect that thing to the L8. Um, you got to follow the syntax. If you, But if you do it right, then when I look for 50, it finds 2652 formatted. And if I look for 80, it finds 2732. And if I look for 20, 20, it finds 25. And if I look for negative eight, um, oops, sorry. There you go. If I look for 50, it works. If I look for 80, it works. If I look for negative eight, it zeroes out because it doesn't know what to do. And if I look for 500, it also zeroes out because it doesn't know what to do, right? So um, that's a sum ifs function. Um, you know, you could throw in something that says like, if it's a zero, then do something else, but you can see mechanically it's working. So let's take this thing to task. Uh, I'm basically gonna take this bit of ugliness, this bit of ugliness, I'm gonna put dollar signs around the blue and the red and also around the green. And instead of look, looking at L8 as my comparison month, I'm going to, well, here, I'm going to take that, and I'm going to do it, I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to do it down here. I'm going to copy it here. And I'm going to say, let's, let's hook up the right things. So I'm going to look for, that's my, where my sum range is, and I'll F for that. That's my first criteria, and I'll dollar sign that. That's my second criteria. Oops, yeah, second criteria, and I'll dollar sign that. And then, uh, oh, oopsie, did I do it right? I always, I can't ever tell. I should do less than equal to Okay, so now I take this, and if I drag this across, we should see that when it goes from 25 and it gets to 24, uh, yeah, 24, when it gets to 25, it changes, and I'll just drag this all the way across just to make sure it's working, but it, it should work. So in this case, it's 26.52 for months 49 to 72. It's 25.75 for months 25 to whatever the heck it is. And it's, you know, 25 for this. Now, of course, the final bit is I got to take that. I got to multiply that value by, well, I got to divide it by 12. I got to multiply that by the square footage, dollar sign it, take that copy that across, 
maybe do some formatting and some formatting. And there it is. We now have a potential gross revenue that starts at 250 and then every two years goes up a little bit and a little bit more. And as you can see, these second tenants, these tenant two and tenant three are st starting respectively in month eight and month 15. Cool, that gets me to gross revenue. Uh, that's quite a bit of work. Why don't we take a break for now and we'll come back with the next video in a bit. Um, again, if this sort of stuff fills you with joy, feel free to check out my website. Um, and as I always like to say, keep building better models. Thank you very much.